All right, so welcome to part two of my Coda Motion Activated Smart Floodlight Review. In this video, I'll show you how to install the Coda Light Camera in place of an existing floodlight on your house. In the first part, I'll remove my existing floodlight, then attach the Coda mounting bracket. After, I'll wire and install the Coda Motion Light and test out the Coda Smart App and review video lighting and quality in my backyard. And the video description below has the link to part one if you still need to learn how to do the initial Wi-Fi pairing in Coda App Install. So now let's head outside and remove the existing motion light. All right, now that I'm up here wearing socks and sandals, we're going to remove the old motion light fixture, which as you can see has seen better days. It's now a home for spiders and moths. So right now I'm just taking the utility blade and cutting around the outside of the box to remove the old silicon sealant without taking my house paint off. Now that I've used the utility knife to break free of the silicon sealant, I'm going to remove the two screws holding this old fixture into place. So now that I've successfully broken the light fixture free of the silicon sealant and unscrewed the screws on both sides of the old motion fixture, I can remove it from the wall. Okay, so that reveals the mounting plate from the existing motion security light. The Coda uses a different plate than this one. So we're gonna remove these two screws and the ground screw from the existing mounting plate from this motion light. And we'll replace this existing mounting plate with the one that came with the Coda cam. So this is the existing ground that we'll want to reconnect to the Coda cam. In my case and in my house, the white is the neutral and the black is the hot. I'm gonna disconnect those from the old fixture. And now that we have our wires identified and free, we can install the Coda's mounting plate, snake the wires through and make all of our connections. Time to say goodbye to this disappointing motion light. Now on the Coda cam, we need to remove the existing plug-in connection. So to do that, we're going to remove these two waterproof plugs, one on each side of the Coda cam. The actual screw heads are below the rubber gasket here, so you have to really kind of push in to make a connection. There's one. Spin this around, go for the other side. Okay, you want to save these plugs for later. All right, so that exposes our mounting plate here. There's the ground screw that you saw on the outside of my house. So that's gonna be the new connection point for ground. Very thick gasket on the back side here that should help level out uneven walls. You'll still wanna use some silicone on the outside to prevent shorts. You don't want any water getting in there. And there is an up indication. So now let's put the gaskets in our pocket and head outside and attach this to my wall. All right, we're back outside again. My neighbor's really loud grass cutters have shown up to ruin the audio. Here's our mounting plate. As you see, it just slips over there. Slide the wires through. We're going to hook this ground onto this green screw and we're going to try and see if we can sneak some of the included screws into the 30, 40 year old mounting plate behind here and hopefully everything reaches. All right, with my stucco thickness, I needed to use one of the existing screws instead of one of the ones provided by Kodakam. But that's not a big deal. That's why you always save your old hardware because my stucco was thicker than normal. See, I have a level up here to make sure that I'm mounting this plate nice and level on the wall. I want to tighten these up real nice so that the gasket snugs up nice to the wall to account for all the stucco imperfections and years of paint. Pretty satisfied with that. See, the gasket contoured pretty nicely. So now I'm going to get the S-hook, which I'm going to temporarily use to attach to the camera so that when it's hanging off of the wall, 10 feet off the ground here, I can one-handed attach the hot and neutral connections as well as the ground screw, and then we can set everything in place. All right, so to remove the power cord, we need to get this back plate off. So there's four screws in here that it's hard to see, but they're in there. So we're going to unscrew those. And they're also easy to lose. There's one. It's two. Three. And the screwdriver appears to be a little bit magnetic. So thank you, Coda. I wish we were able to take this cover off. Exposing the goodies inside. There's this retainer clip that holds the power cord into place. We slide that out. Now we just need to take off the wire nuts and put those aside for later. Now that those are free, we should be able to sneak out the power cord. All right, so now that I have the Kodak cam here, my S hook, hook things through. Now up here, we're gonna take that S-hook and find a spot to kind of hoist it on. 
And now that should give us the ability to connect these wires without having to worry about falling off of the ladder. And we're gonna start here with the ground screw for the Coda light cam. Just loosening up this green ground. Now that we have our ground going around our ground screw, we're gonna just tighten that down really good. You might have noticed I just flipped this because I had it the wrong way. You want the wire to be wrapping the same direction as you're turning your screw, so clockwise, so that if anything, the wire's gonna become tighter, not looser. So I recently discovered these Wago wire connectors and I'm becoming a big fan. So I'm gonna use these instead of the twist-on connectors, mostly because of the fact that um, I'm up on a ladder and I'm doing this video one-handed. So as you can see, these just push right on and you clamp down on the wire. You have a nice tight connection. Now we just make our Coda connection here. And now we're gonna repeat with the other side. And man, these grass cutters are really trying to screw me here. In my case, I have these connections on a switch and the switch is off. If you do not have this on a switch connection, make sure your breakers are off. And even if you have it on either of those cases, you wanna test this with a voltage tester before you start touching wires, because this is very dangerous. Okay, at this point, we're grounded. We have our hot and neutral wires connected. Right now, we're temporarily hanging off of the wall here with this S-hook. Somewhere in the distance, we have the sound of leaf blowers playing merrily. And now we just have to connect the Coda light cam to the outside of my house. So now I have to take the body of the Coda cam and slide it onto these mount points here. So I have to fold these wires into the junction box and slide everything into place. So we're just gonna slide the box onto the mounting screws. Makes a pretty firm connection. Now there's gonna be this waterproof plug here that's gonna cover up the hole from where the um, actual power cord was for the initial install. So that plug holes down here on the bottom of the Coda cams. Uh, informational sticker here. So it should snap in firmly and remain flush. You need to do that so you don't run the risk of water or spiders or something getting in there and causing an electrical short. So now you're going to want to take these little Phillips head bolts and put them back in here so that they can match with those bolts from the Coda cam. And again just repeat on the other side. And those have their own waterproof plugs as well that go over those Phillips screws. And lastly, to do it on this side of the Coda cam. All right, okay, so that's how to mount the Coda light cam to the outside of your house. And the last steps here would be to add some silicon caulking to the outside here to keep the water out and do some painting to the outside of your house if things don't match up like the old light fixture did. Now let's go ahead and test everything out. So we're outside my house now. We're gonna give the Coda light cam some real world tests. Have the app open here and enter it. So when you're live monitoring the camera, the outer LED ring will go green. In the app, I can turn the light on and off, and I can activate the siren. To show you how far the light projects from the Coda light cam, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now and activate the light. And that's not on full intensity. I can go ahead and crank that up in the camera settings. So right now that's at half brightness, and that brings it to full brightness. So now I'll show you what nighttime recordings look like from the Coda light cam. So I hope you found this video review of installing the Coda light cam on your house useful. And if you did, please click on the like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.